Alright, good morning, afternoon or evening everyone. Today I'm going to be covering the tier 8 premium light cruiser, the Bayard. Quite a heavily requested cruiser um, for the Fresh Look series, of course. Um, if you do have any other suggestions for any other ship, please do let me know in the comments below. I will try to feature it in a future video. Um, but if you do enjoy my channel and the content, guys, I would really appreciate a sub to the channel, of course. Thank you so much if you have already subscribed. But if you do enjoy the video, do please leave a like or a sub. Even share the video because it really does help out a smaller channel like mine. I appreciate it a lot, guys. But anyway, let's go over the Bayard. So Bayard, of course, is a tier 8 light cruiser. Um, similar to mines in a way, but also quite different. And I will show you that shortly. Um, but um, let's start off with the armor layout first. So it's 25mm nose armor, 25mm side armor, 25mm aft armor. And you have 27 millimeter deck. So really and truly no armor on this thing to be honest. And you of course have a pretty big superstructure. Uh, but if we remove the external armors and take a look at the citadel. As you can see it sits quite high. It's I mean it doesn't sit under the guns which is kind of nice. I mean it does but that's underwater. But over the water here it's all in the middle part. So you do have to be really careful when you're playing the Bayard. Um, but anyway, so that's the armor layout. Let's move over to my commander build I'm going to be running, which is Lost Stand, Incoming Fire Lurch, Priority Target, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert, Adrenaline Rush, and I'm going to be running Consumables Enhancements and Demo Expert. In terms of which points you should take first, for the commander build, um, you should take first probably, you should take uh, Lost Stand, Priority Target, and then you take Adrenaline Rush, Concealment Expert, then Superintendent, then Survivability Expert, then Consumables Enhancements, and then Demolition Expert. You can, of course, switch and mix and match up to you, but that's what I would take, first of all, if you're specking it slowly, slowly. Then for my modules, I'm taking Concealment, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Engine Boost Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And I will be using the Hydro here, not the DFAA. Um, for the Camouflage for the Bayard, we have this Camouflage, which is the default, which I think looks amazing, to be honest. Um, Bayard is a pretty good looking ship overall, I would say. Um, that you also have an alternate one, which I don't actually like that much. I think the light blue is a bit weird. But if you like it, you can totally run it if you have alternate camo colors. And then for the weird camo, I guess you have this one, which, I mean, is a bit over the top for sure. Um, but there it is for you over the top people who want this camouflage. But I prefer the normal one, which I will be running in the video. But yeah, let's take a look at the ship characteristics real quick, and then we can go into the match. So for ship characteristics, I have 38,300 HP, and that is with SC. We have a 28% torpedo protection damage reduction. For our main guns, we have 7.5 second reload. We have 12 guns, as you can see, 152s. Um, pretty sh slow tra shell travel time overall, because they're really light shells. Um, you have 30 millimeters of pen, standard light cruiser, and you have 16.4 kilometer gun range, which is not too bad. 14% fire chance, which is actually quite high for a light cruiser. But most importantly with the guns is you have a reload booster on a light cruiser. So you get quite a quick gun reload, which I will show you shortly, but it's pretty good and usable. Um, for torpedoes, they're 9 kilometer torps. They're pretty much standard French torps. 1.3 detection, 60 knots, 14k damage. Nothing too crazy. The torp angles are actually pretty good because they are French torp angles. So that's quite nice. Airstrike, so it does have depth charge airstrike. A 7 kilometer range, better than if it was ship based. Not sure why it is air based when it is a light cruiser, but we cannot complain because that is pretty good. A defenses. Um, they're actually pretty decent if you spec into them. If you take DFA, maybe you take the module for A gun mod 1 or something. And I don't know, maybe some other stuff. Probably in the commander and stuff. But I wouldn't do that because, well, I'm building it for guns specifically. And I don't want to just donate stuff from the guns, etc. And I don't want to remove the hydro because I feel like it can be really useful. For maneuverability, we go 35.7 knots. That will, of course, go a bit upwards because we have a 20% speed boost that lasts 257 seconds. So we'll be going pretty fast a lot of the time. Um, circle Turning circle radius is 730 meters. Rudder shift time is 9.3 seconds. So not the fastest. But if you want, you could switch it to steering gears mod 1. That's up to you. Or you could take steering gears mod 2 instead of concealment. But I wouldn't. Just because the concealment on this thing is 9.6. So the concealment on the Bayard is really incredible. Um, because it's under 10 kilometers, 
so it's pretty nice um, to have. So, but yeah, um, let's go into the game in the Bayard. All right, so here we are on Northern Waters in the Bayard. Um, it looks to be a tier six match, so it might be pretty chill and relaxed, but we'll see. Let's go towards the A cap because I want to see if we can get some damage. Now, of course, it is a CV game, so we have to be careful, especially with rockets. Remember, Bayard has no heal, and we're not running the AA spec Bayard, so we're not going to have a good AA like in, in general, so we have to be a bit careful. All right, here we are in front of a Bismarck. Finally, we're going to get to play the game. Oh, there's an Akatsuki. Um, we're actually going to use Reload Boost for this guy. That's on the Yuki. And look, as you can see, our reload's pretty quick. Now the question is, can I aim? Mm, not really. We got some damage on him. We got a fire. I don't know how much damage we got. He's spotted again because of the fire. He doesn't seem to have DCP, so I think he's permanently spotted here. We need to not take damage to the Bismarck, if possible. Hopefully someone else shoots the Akatsuki, maybe? I have to be careful of the CV that's coming in for a drop. Uh, he's dead to fires. We don't need to shoot him. TV's coming in for a drop on me, so we have to respect it. I angle into that. And then start playing the game again. So we still have three minutes of speed boost left, which is super nice. Uh, but we are broadside to the Bismarck shot. Uh, because of the CV angle, but it's okay. We take a Citadel. We might die. Maybe not. Probably not. We'll see. Well, we're down half HP, which is kind of sad in a CV game, to be honest. Um, but we were forced broadside to Abyssal. Which is kind of unfortunate. But I don't think we should die here unless the CV really comes back for us. I don't know. I just don't feel like we're going to die here. Unless the CV comes for us. But we'll see. As you can see, the arcs aren't easy to use overall. They are quite arky. The shells aren't that fast. Um, so you do have to be... Well, you need to know how to aim, I guess, if you're gonna be playing this ship. I wish I got a fire, by the way. Um, speaking of fires, something I wanted to mention was the old IFHE of Bayard. Um, because before, when Bayard came out, this was a few years ago, um, it had the old IFHE it could mount. By old IFHE, I meant the pre-nerf IFHE. Because as we know, IFHE got nerfed quite, quite substantially. Um, so nowadays, well back then, before, when you wanted to pen 32mm of armor, which is for example Richelieu everywhere. We're going to be fighting a Richelieu here. So if you wanted to pen 32mm uh, of armor, um, you had to take IFHE before. Um, but your fire chance didn't get reduced by a lot. Like it was only 1 or 2% decrease. So you get to keep like a 13% fire chance with... The pen. Nowadays, if you want to take IFHE, you will get the pen, sure. But what you will trade for that pen is the actual fire chance. You will trade 7% of fire chance, which is quite a fair amount, to be honest. Oh, there's going to be a Sims coming around the corner, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, so that's that's the reason I'm not taking IFHE. You can totally take IFHE nowadays. But it's just something I wouldn't take, to be honest, because of the severe reduction in fire chance. 7k from HE. I mean, this guy is literally running at us. Not sure why. Uh, maybe he didn't know I was here. But it's okay. Um, we need to speed up and hopefully not die to the Rook. If possible. He does overmatch me everywhere, as we know. Except my deck armor. Ooh, we're okay. We only have 30 seconds of speed boost left. After our speed boost runs out, we're gonna have a, quite a hard time to dodge, to be honest, overall. As you know, our speed is 42.5 knots if we go full speed, which is super fast for a cruiser. Not just for dodging, but even for rotation ability. And that's something most people forget to mention when you have really high top speed. Obviously, you have really high um, dodging potential, but you also have rotating potential. So let's say you spawn on a flank where there's pretty much nothing. And you want to rotate to the other side of the map because the enemy team is pushing up really hard. You can turn on your speed boost and cross the map really fast. Which gets you in the game really fast, of course. That seems like a really obvious thing, but I just wanted to mention it. Because, you know, it's something maybe you didn't know, <laughs> I guess. But there's a fire on the Rook. Double fire on the Rook, actually, permanent. And we're going to be using our Hydro, even though there's no need right now, actually. That was probably a big waste of Hydro, but it's okay. Um, our speed boost is back in one minute. 
We're just trying to get some jet damage to get over 100k. I'm actually gonna stop shooting because we saw one target on PT. That's the Rook. He's rotating his guns on us. Oh, the CV's coming for me. It's a bit unfortunate. Let's see if we can provide a support. The problem is with the CV coming for me is... Well, we have to be broadside to the bombers to minimize bomb damage. Uh, but that means we're gonna be broadside to the Rook, which means that would get a lot of ship damage. We'll see. Took some ship damage. Okay, we didn't take too much bomber damage. It's not too bad. We're not dead. The problem is I'm, I'm a bit scared of the Rook right now because of AR. He could reload very fast. I'm surprised the fighters didn't engage the, the bombers there. I'm not sure what happened. Why didn't the, the fighters do what they're supposed to do? Question mark. Am I dead? Yes. But as I said, guys, um, we wouldn't have died <laughs> if the CV didn't come for us. But the CV came for us, so we, yes, we did die. It is what it is. Um, let's go back to port. So we ended up doing 116,000 damage, 199 shell hits, 3 kills, 13 fires, uh, first blood. Not bad overall. Team score, we got top of the team, 2.2k base XP. Detailed report, um, 34k on the Bismarck, 13k on the Akatsuki, 12k on the Sims, and 56k on the Rook. And we took most of our damage to the Rook and the Bismarck as a cause of, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> You'll figure it out, I guess, if you watch the game. <laughs> but um, we took 79, oh, sorry, we did 79k damage from guns and we did 35k damage from fires. So pretty good. Of course, you can use the AP on broadsides. We just didn't really have too many broadsides at close range. You need to be at close range to use that. AP. But anyway, we have 520,000 credits, 7.7k XP, 700 free XP, and 7.9k commander XP. For my commander build, once again, I have last stand, incoming fire alert, priority target, superintendent, survivability expert, adrenaline rush, uh, consumables enhancements, demolition expert, and concealment expert. You can totally remove demolition expert and consumables enhancements and run IFHE if you want. It's just something I wouldn't do anymore. For concealment, a concealment system mod 1, prop mod 1, aiming system mod 1, engine boost mod 1, and main armaments mod 1. For my statistics in the Bayard, if we go take a look, uh, I have to actually find it, which might be a bit difficult because I have a hard time finding these ships, but at some point I will find it, I'm sure. One day, found it. I have 45 games in the Bayard, 76% win rate. And 141k damage um, average in the Bayard. My highest damage game is 272k damage. But yes, this is my overall statistics in the Bayard. Pretty good overall. Um, quite, quite good average damage, of course. Um, but for the price of the ship as well, if we go into the armory, it is, I would say, around... I don't know, actually. We'll have to check. Uh, tier 8. French. It's... 11,300 doubloons, so on par with some other tier 8 cruisers. And if we look at the premium shop price, um, if we load it up, ships, and you click tier 8, and then French, and then we'll find it. <laughs> 37 euros and 17 cents for the Bayard. But what do I think of the Bayard? Is it a good ship for you guys? Well, um, for good and experienced players, I think it's a wonderful ship to have. It's a great ship. And the reload booster, the speed, the concealment... They all make it really fun and enjoyable to play. The only downside I would say is for like low, um, for mm, not good players, I guess. Um, I'm just gonna say it's just for inexperienced players. Um, it's just it's not easy to play for you guys, honestly, because you do have to know how to dodge, etc. You need to know how to use your concealment. You need to know how to aim with the guns so you can hit things at longer ranges. Um, there's quite a lot of things, and as you saw, even I got punished there. I got cross-fired by the CV and the Bismarck, and I got Citadel for half my HP. So you do have to be really careful in the Bayard. But even if you take half your HP like I did, that doesn't mean the game is over. You shouldn't quit. You should always play it till the end. Alright, so we did end up getting like 60k extra damage after we got Citadel. So remember, just do keep that in mind. Um, in terms of is it worth it, for experienced players, it's totally worth it. Um, it's a wonderful experience. For less experienced players, maybe you don't know how to dodge, etc. Maybe play something like a Charles Martel first. Now, I know Charles Martel... It, it's honestly still not that bad. I, I still love Charles Martel. If you want a video on the Charles Martel in the future, I would love to feature it. I think it's an amazing ship. Um, but 
the thing with it is, I guess, it's a bit easier to play overall. And the thing about it is, it's free. So you don't have to pay the balloons. First, maybe you can practice with the open water ability of the Charles. Um, and, of course, then you can move over to something like a Bayard um, overall. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys, overall. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, do le leave a like, a sub, maybe share the video. I would really appreciate it because it does help um, a channel like mine out a lot. And, of course, please do subscribe to my channel. I would really greatly appreciate it. But that's pretty much it, guys. I will see you in the next video. Um, and big fan.